final. The side of match of the Xelos Red uh, number two. Let's see who makes it into the 16 players that will fight from Europe, North America, Korea, and one Chinese in colorful. It is Ido versus Robinson. And the new feature that I would like to present to you wonderful people is a new graph. And I know it doesn't mean much, but hey, here's APM. Ooh, oh, wait a second. There it is. There it is. Who's spamming here? Certainly Robinson. High APM right off the bat. <laughs> okay. So, Ido taking a little bit of a slower approach. Robinson is spamming like crazy and we start our game. On Terranus stand, Ido upper left, Germany, Poland, represented by Robinson as a night elf in the upper right. So what's it gonna be? Warden, it is baby! On the other side, we see a death knight. Not too surprising. Ghoul opening. So I wonder if it's gonna be a counter expat. Against the warden. Very hard to do. As it can be harassed with mercenaries and fennel knives, and one can be very, very powerful here. With, of course, this mercenary creep opening. Fast level 3. No second engine of war yet. Neither here nor here. Wonder how he's getting there. In the quarterfinal, Robinson played uh, Warden Amazonia against Hippo. Worked out really well. Attack. So we got a DK now. Is he gonna fast expand? He's selling the altar. Good scout by Robinson. Making sure he knows exactly what's up. If you get it done, man, Garks can be really good. Got a little bit of damage. That's the first blood. So no detonate here. No second wisp here. Engine of War. Wait, Huntress Hall here? What? Robinson is doing a Huntress build? Alongside a Warden. Wonderful items, by the way. And there's the second engine of war. I've never seen this. This hunch hole will come as a surprise. Big pressure early on. It's not too easy. With the crystal ball, will he scan for it? This would be a no more normal position to scan. Oh, Ido, that's not gonna be easy for you. Warden comes in, hasn't decided for skills yet. Oh, gets trapped right away, so that's a blink for sure. <laughs> or a dispel, all right. And now it's up for the right clicks. Warden thanks to the slippers, very powerful ones. You know, trying to defend this with nuke and more damage, but this is the first cancel right there. And Ido's game plan so far not working out too well. Oh, he can't, he can blink. Interesting. Crazy game already. A player's forces are under attack. So, Ido's not following up the scout after killing this archer. How much pressure will he expect? He's not attacking, just going for the narrow. This helps, of course, a lot. There's more coil, so there's a lot of mana used for mobility and escape, not on damage. So, yeah, it's a big delay for Ido, but there's also no tier 2 for Robinson. He's just pooling hunts now, creeps this, level 3. And then there's a timing attack. If Ido expects this... The spirit tower would do wonders. A player's forces I don't think Ido is expecting this second push. Thing. I really don't. You know knows about the hunts? You sure about that? I'm not too sure. Lionhorn, of course, wonderful for this, but the one is so low. Needs to go back, has no staff. 
Now he absolutely knows. Okay, now he can prepare. Wonder what the reaction is. Second Ziggurat already coming. He can't go into a Spirit Tower yet, but that's the immediate reaction to this. Like, Graveyard trying to get the Spirit Tower up, trying to get Robinson as far away from his expansion and his main as he can. And the AP push is coming. Wisps on the other side, far away on the other side. And this will take some time. More time for Ido. For more ghouls. Ziggurat. Will he build it into a narrow or is he waiting? Tier 1. All the way. Nobody is tacking. It's okay. And second narrow bit is can't wait for the graveyard to finish and then for the spirit tower to finish. And ghouls versus hunts. This usually is an advantage for the night elf. Plus the warden has shadow strike only. No fan. Fan would be the best thing since sliced bread against this, but Shadow Strike is really good against the DK, so more Mercs are streaming in. APs are coming up. This strategy might just be the win for Robins. First one's getting cancelled. Not too much mana anymore on this Merc, but Ghouls are getting sacrificed. Ido can afford this financially, kind of, because he is on two bases. There's so many Hunts, and he doesn't have a solution against Hunts. Also, uh, oh, DK! Thanks to the Shadow Strike, sorry, didn't see that. But oh, this game is a disaster for Ido. He didn't know about this coming. He didn't know about this push. Calls for the GG, Wano Robinson. That was pretty much a build order win, wasn't it? Hunt's AP push. Against the DK expansion, that's how it goes. When there's no piercing damage, when there's no towers. That all in worked. It wasn't really protected. The first cancel was nice. With good warden. And... Good Warden, good control, of course a lot of mana was invested, but the Warden was safe and then it was level 3. Good Creep Route as well. Sneaky proxy build, I like it. Yeah, Ido got rushed, but he didn't know it. Never saw it coming. But he definitely has a chance to fight back into this. I would still rate Ido a little higher. Than Robinson, just at the moment. So there's a chance for a three mapper. And our game starts. Map number two. Last chance for Edo Boy. <laughs> Can't wait to see how Robinson Rex colorful with 2 0. Ha <laughs> That would be amazing. Would be great for the Europeans to cause some upsets there. So let's go. Map number two. You know, this time. Upper right on concealed hill. Kind of reeks like uh, gargoyles to me. But okay, probably not a warden. This is not a warden map at all. This is could be an AP push, but rather not. That would be very outside the box. So rather a keeper. Yeah, keeper it is. And on the other side, you know, what is he playing? Some kind of lich push or is it the DK once again? It's the DK once again. Cool opening, rather standard against Night Elf.
<laughs> Robinson is just spamming the 600 APM. What a mad lad. You know, total chill. Minimal principle. So just do as much as you really need to. A player's forces are under attack. Remember good old MTW Darwin with his 70 APM? Still getting top six Germany. <laughs> Five ghouls, no second ziggurat yet. This is a fast tech. Looks like it, huh? A player's or he screwed up big attack. time, but this looks like a fast tech to me. So this time the wisp is not getting sniped. The keeper is rushing over immediately. Didn't decide for entangle. Or tree and see yet, but will be look at the look at the dodge. And here's Entangle, that's level two, that's also tree and that's the wisp saved. This early game is also not too great for Edo at all. Like the pressure is on, DK can unfold. Oh, 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 oh. He gets a surround that's absolutely perfect, but good movement by Robinson. Man, that would be a cool story for him. Would be the... Like, they, they played last year in January in, in a qualifier as well, and that was Robinson's game to take. And now there's attack, and now there's focus on Acolytes, and there's more Entangle. Like, one Acolyte will definitely fall. Maybe two. Oh, Trian gets that kill. Oh man, Ido gotta be so careful. There's no coil available. That's the next entangle that might just be two acolytes down. He just got the mana for the coil, but it was too late because the acolyte was already dead. And that is so worth the TP. Three acolytes down. Ooh. Jesus. Robinson. Players forces are under storming attack. through this game. Expands. Yeah, he definitely... He definitely has the time to do so now. He's mining with five workers, his opponent with three. His opponent can't rebuild them. The tech is at what? 60%? Freaking hell of a harass here. And now we can creep up a storm. We can go for the expansion rather early. Players forces are under because of that entangle creep mechanic. Robinson is just all over the place. Detonates again, gets rid of a little bit of mana, gets rid of the skeleton, slows down creeping, buys his time. He knows exactly where Ido is, and Ido doesn't have a force to push anything. He has to invest 150 gold now to just get the acolytes back. And where is the macro? Ido. He has about his ghouls first. There we go. That's attack. a big gold delay, man. And yep. Easy Creeperino for Robinson. Parry up. Of course the TP is gone. So that's a little scary for Robinson. Once this fifth acolyte is back, we compare the gold and you will see the difference. Robinson is investing into a staff for mobility. I like it. There's a wisp in the north. So you can just go for it again. Okay, now what we got? 9,900. That's, that's a 550 gold lead plus the two acolytes. That's 700 gold. A player's forces are under Trading for two, three entangles and a TP. Very well done. And Ido is in trouble. Not saying that he can't come back because Garks in the hands of Ido are powerful. Flip side though, thanks to the Saras, it's only one crypt. So I can definitely see one or two Garks to just creep the fountains and then transition to something and harass a bit. Expo is up, just needs to move. Ancients of Wind early. A player's what? Under attack. He playing. Hippo Riders? The Against the Lich on CH? 
Not too sure, but okay, we get this harass again. No coil nearby. It's another acolyte. Just for mana. The staff is off cooldown as the keeper walked there. Yus is getting out harassed with a with a Garg build. That's something. A player's forces are under attack. And now the tree is making his way over. No nature's blessing yet, so this will take time. Ido can muscle up a little. Ido got two very bad early games here. Probably not one of his good matchups. I've seen him play a lot better. Turn for president. Thank you, Laser. <laughs> he's not playing. No, he's not playing talent. Man, I thought it for a second. Uh, Saint Valton. For double minus armor. Everybody knows how strong double minus the armor is, but. Is I think Glorlight gotta show the world and then it catches fire. Wait a minute. Don't tell me Ido just started the tech when he was missing two acolytes. Oh. He's definitely missing one. Are they on top of each other? What is this? Yeah, they are. <laughs> okay. Well, a little glitch. That would have been a sick mistake. But it's not. Robinson's expo is up. A player's forces are under attack. He's gonna do something against it. Good old keeper alchemist mass air. And you can't counter this with Garks on one base. It doesn't work. You're always outnumbered. Your opponent has more gold, your opponent has more production buildings. And your opponent can reduce your armor. Thank you, Darth Kalito, for the 11 1 3 sub. Much love. Get upgrades already? Nope. Also, having arches on the ground is nice as long as they're alive. Other giant strength. Of course, we say this about hippos that you can creep the fountains easy, but Ido never made the move for that. So you can do it with the hippos just as well. Let's level 3-3. Three, three. Keeper is just roaming. He's basically a courier at this point, right? A player's force are under attack. This might be time for the counter expansion. A smart person must explain to me why some undeads are going one base gargs. Isn't that just, in theory alone, not working? Or can anyone explain the logic? Because I don't get it. I don't get it for years. Since TBC started playing this in like, I don't know, 2017 or something? Got Hippogriff Riders now. Attack. Weak damage, only strong in mass. Speaking of mass, that's good damage against the Drake here. Creeping up, 3-2. Claws is nice damage. Lich could potentially change this. Boots of Kaltalas, not perfect. And Robinson must make sure that this Expo is not coming up. Rinkin can just power produce. Even getting a sapper. Din diddle din diddle din diddle din bonanza. This is oh ho 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 ho! Two ziggies right away, and probably a third one. <laughs> Wait, oh no! He just got in with the DK. What an absolute monstrous disaster for Ido. Supply block, getting his acolytes raided. Ooh, the hippo's a little out of position though. That was big kills. And it was also one of his last ziggurats. 
Oh, brothers, this is a lot. There's a big info potion. This keeper can hang in there forever. Can probably get heal sprayed as well. Treants take care of the haunted gold mine. Hippos and archers against the Gargs. That is such an easy win. Good news for Ido. He's not supply blocked anymore. Bad news. Everything else is horrible. Unwilling to use the big invo. Not going for the haunted gold mine. Not deciding this match, but Robinson's advantage is ginormous. There's no way he's losing this game. There is not a single possibility in the world that Robinson is losing this game. He planned that TP with only the DK, yep. Well, that worked well. A player's forces are under attack. Okay, a little bit of a Hail Mary. Immediately punished by Robinson. Yes, of course, no dispel. So, where'd the item go? DK got it, Helm of Valor. But it's not a game winning item, it's not an aura or something. Second last coil, another untangle. He can untangle until the end of days. There's no TP, just used it. But he's getting close to a shop, so that's fine. Finally a second crypt. Still no second base though. <laughs> Robinson is expecting this. Fairies are coming in now. As they can't be attacked by Nova. This is 32 supply. It's close to 4-4. Four, four. It's two base, one base. And you do a supply block. This 30 supply gap is not getting any smaller. <laughs> so many treants. When there's... Oh my, when there's no destroyers, man, what can we do? Keeper is so oppressive. It all started with the great early harass with the 700 gold. And Ido was never able to recover from this. Level 4, Garks are just disappearing. Now the Garks aren't even in range for a Nova. These hippos are all clumped up. It would be perfect, but there's not even mana for it at the moment. Oh, Jesus. The kill speed on the Garks. Yeah, Ido, I think you can say goodbye to the Xenos Red Cup. Going to be played by Robinson. Everything is getting raided now. More attacks. There's towers here. Okay, nice little idea by Ido to fight in the shadows of the towers, getting a pickup, using stone form, but... Ground army is strong enough. There's no repair. There's probably no acolytes. Ido absolutely desperate at this point. Can you hope for Coil Nova? I even doubt it. There is Coil Nova already, but... There's no goal! There is absolutely nothing. We're still staying in this, but... For what? For fun, maybe? Is that too much fun? I doubt it. Oh, what the hell? My mouse sensitivity just changed. Okay, there's the coil, but... Wait a sec. GG! That is Robinson with the 2-0. Oh, what a clean game from our Polish player. Very polished. The Harasses just did it, right? The Harasses did it in game one. They did it in game two. And with that, the qualifier is over for today. And that is Robinson being the one qualified, following Sonic and Colorful, third night off to make it. Um, there's another match between uh, Terra and Musura. The winner will join the Xelos Red Cup as well, but that is unfortunately postponed. So we show you the participants already. It's lining up to be a great, great, great tournament. We got Thunder Sock Tamiko, three human, Focus Soin Hitman, three.
Orcs, Mikael, Craft, Shake, Insub, probably Terra added to that list as well. And then we got Law Light, Foggy, Colorful, Sonic, and Robinson. Game start on January 25th. It's going to be played on Flow Server, so all regions represented. $1,300, and it's all organized by Laden, sponsored by Xelos Red. We thank you guys so much for that. And I thank you guys for tuning in. I had quite some fun today. A little bit of a hiccup here and there, especially in the beginning. Good laugh we had. And that is me having a weekend now. I'll be back on Monday. But there's more action on Back to Warcraft, of course. And where could you check that schedule of Back to Warcraft? That is very easy, guys. You check it on backtowarcraft.com and you see our upcoming schedule. Dust League Qualifier 2 tonight at 2 a.m. Going to be brought to you by Mr. Carson. We are back on Monday with the ESL Open Cup on Tuesday. Bidu is going to... Uh, present the Dust League draft, which is always an exciting thing. Hashtag rigged. Uh, Wednesday, we're back for Silver Cup. Thursday, we got Theory Craft. On Friday, is Skill Cup once again. And on Saturday is the ESL Meisterschaft Grand Final. The Sunday after is the 2-on-2 two -two show match between Grubby and Knopf versus Kraft and Starbuck. We also have a show match between uh, Grubby and Armin versus Knopf and Taker. So two cool 2 and 2s with a lot of money on the line next Sunday. And then there's the ESL Cup once again. So we got like 10 days of content for you. Warcraft every day. And of course, you can catch everything on our YouTube as well. If you like to know what do we do, keep following us on our socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Join the Discord for a wonderful community. And if you feel very, very generous, I know money is tight these days, but if you can afford it, feel free to support us on Twitch with the sub. Uh, via Streamlabs with a donation, whatever you can, every dollar helps. You can buy our merchandise at merch.backtowarcraft.com and use the Amazon ref link if you want to feed uh, Mr. Bezos more. We get a 5-10% to 10 share from your purchase. That's it! It was a very lovely chat today. I had a lot of fun with you guys with my solo casts here in the past, uh, not three days, four days. Now it's time to take a rest and improve everything we do and then see you guys on monday check out the dust league have a wonderful weekend